I want to share the story of a, a former client of ours who came to us a couple of years ago and he was drinking excessively and he came to our coaching program, which is called Project 90. And we help people to stop drinking for at least 90 days. We do it without medication mm -hmm. or rather we don't encourage medication. We just do it as a holistic way and we do it as a rewiring of the mindset. And this particular client came to us and he was on four different types of medications, acid reflux medication, blood pressure medication sleep medication, antidepressants. And mm -hmm. he had been on those for what he said up to 10 years. So some of them he'd been on for a decade, some of them maybe a few years, etc. But certainly when he came to us, he was on four different medications. He then stopped drinking through our, let's call it mind rewiring process. Mm -hmm. And then over the course of, I think it was six or seven months, if I recall correctly, he got off all medication completely and is now mm -hmm. a couple of years later, uh, sharing with with everyone and anyone that he feels amazing. He's lost weight. He hasn't been on any medication for, you know, since he got off it. His life feels is so much more joy. He's mm -hmm. sleeping well. He's not depressed anymore. He has very low stress and anxiety where once he had high stress and anxiety. Mm -hmm. So I guess my question is, what are your thoughts? Like, can you attribute just stopping alcohol to him getting off those four medications? What's your I, thoughts on that? I, it sounds great. I, that could be really motivating to people people that are finding it hard to focus on this like absolute recovery goal and focus more on alcohol, of course, can excessive alcohol use is linked to higher risk of higher blood pressure, acid reflux, poor sleep and mood symptoms like depression, anxiety. So it could be all those were people treating symptoms of alcohol, but not really addressing the alcohol. So it, it's absolutely it's probably quite common that people mm. that are heavy drinkers on a daily or regular basis have side effects. They have kind of medical conditions related to that heavy alcohol use. And then that's what your average doctor does. And, and I want to also fully yes. acknowledge that the physician and medical workforce often ignores, misses, is incapable of, doesn't have time for, whatever it is, they don't recognize or adequately treat a, a primary alcohol use disorder. And that is very common in primary care. So while I'm saying, oh, we can do all this stuff in primary care, we can also just completely miss the main headline which is that Mr. B has, you know, a, a pretty serious alcohol problem and not much else is going to get a lot better without addressing that alcohol problem. So then the person through whatever means, but it sounds like not using medication and using, you know, this kind of behavioral approach, the, the holistic package is able to make changes, which is awesome. And then they don't need, they, they start to lose some of those medical problems associated with the daily drinking. They feel a lot better. Their weight's going down, their blood pressure's improved. They don't have the reflux and they can sleep a lot better. They feel better energy and mood wise, concentration, diet, sexual function, all that stuff. That's like a huge win. Now, you could have used naltrexone in there to help you with that, but that person didn't. And they did great with the recovery plan that worked for them. So th that does not surprise me in that we more and more we recognize all these medical problems that link back to alcohol. Uh, there was a lot of press this week about uh, kind of yet another. Uh, kind of article study and report pointing towards um, elevated cancer risk, especially in middle, uh, younger and middle-aged adults linked to heavy drinking. So the kind of understanding that heavy alcohol use has profound kind of pro-cancer properties, and that's been under-recognized until like kind of the last like five to 10 years. And probably no amount of alcohol is like healthy in the way that people have also kind of grown up hearing about like red wine or the Mediterranean diet. Probably think that some alcohol is maybe neutral like it's not going to necessarily kill you or shorten your lifespan, but don't call it healthy. So I like that case, that story, and that it shows a lot of stuff that can be linked to alcohol. And if the alcohol is addressed, the overall kind of health status can improve uh, and get you I, off a lot of medications. When you were putting forward the idea that if he had used now Trexone, he would, then he would have been on five different medications, right? He'd, he'd be on the acid reflux, the blood pressure, the sleep medication, the antidepressants. And now he comes and he says, oh, and I'm drinking a lot. That would would mean that a primary care giver like a GP or a doctor would then put him on naltrexone. Now he's yeah. on five five medications. That's a is the way the way I see it, where I'm hearing it, that's a problem. Yeah. That's a big problem. And by your own and again, I don't want this to come across as I'm I'm criticizing you just because you're a doctor, right? It's easy to just throw all doctors under the bus. But yeah, yeah. a couple of things you said uh, felt alarming to me. Because you, you actually said in primary care, most doctors ignore, miss, or don't have time for 
primarily treat AUD or identify that an alcohol use disorder is the problem because someone's coming saying, I've got acid reflux, I've got high blood pressure, I've got sleep problems, I'm depressed. I guess my question is why the heck aren't primary doctors asking about their alcohol use and just saying, stop drinking alcohol and I don't have to prescribe you four different medications? Yeah. Why, yeah, so why is that not happening? It's probably a legacy of many decades of kind of ignoring it, not, not really accepting that we should be screening for it in the ways that we know we should be and just kind of a lack of training. We are trying to fix that. The good news is, you know, the, the doctor that graduated med school this year is much more likely to have been trained to think about alcohol, smoking, opiate, other substance use disorders, and then to do something about it uh, and to do something about it themselves rather than just refer out to treatment. So it could be hit or miss, but I'm saying like that's, that's not an unusual story where I've been seeing my doctor. He keeps like, if I go in and say, oh, you know, doc, I'm anxious, but I don't like come in and say, I need your help, you know, not drinking as much. The doctor will say, oh, anxiety, uh, here's some Lexapro. And that'll be the extent, you know, kind of the investigation. And uh, and that doctor won't put it all together. So I'm not, um, I don't know who that person was seeing for their medical team, but chances are collectively they were missing it. Or the patient never felt comfortable disclosing or really kind of being real because they felt they'd be judged, they were ashamed, they were guilty, or they just were never asked. Ask. Those are all like possible combinations of where this goes south and why alcohol use disorders are undertreated. And Nat, while I say it's all getting better, like we don't use enough of any type of effective alcohol treatment, be it behavioral, self-help or medications, because we just don't recognize and kind of intervene on enough alcohol use disorder cases. But I, I can take it as a doctor. I was saying with naltrexone, you might say, well, we need to, to start an alcohol treatment episode. I think a lot of your problems stem from this alcohol. We've got to get that under control. Like, I don't see any of these other things getting much better. And you're probably just going to feel, you know, down and depressed and anxious and unable to sleep if, if you're drinking this much. Now, Trexone can help with that. And then, and then over the course of the same period of time, you might find you can keep naltrexone going and start to take away some of those other medications. I I think uh, doctors also recognize more and more that polypharmacy is not great. Like the more meds you add on to the person's list, the fewer they take as prescribed, because none of us can really keep up with like proper adherence. The more side effects you get, the more drug-drug interactions you get, and the less sense you can make of anything over time. And especially as people get older, they're more likely to have seven medications for this, for that, and blah, blah, blah. And we know that like that is also a problem. So polypharmacy Pharmacy as we age and for multiple chronic problems is not good either. I totally agree with you.